Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of daily current affairs by SSB CAG exams. I am Chaitanya Purab and let's start today's session for 10th of June. So talking about SSB CAG exams, so this is a one-stop solution for all the major difference related examinations like NDA, FCAT, CDS, etc. For more details regarding the courses that we offer, you can visit our website learn.ssbcrackexams.com. You can also follow us on uh, Instagram and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll get all the latest current affair videos and other videos related to defense examinations. Further, you can also download our Android app, SSB Crack Exams from Google Play Store. Now, let's start. So, we shall start with the question of the day from yesterday's session. So, I asked you guys about what is Jal Jeevan Mission and uh, many of you have also answered in the comment section. So, let me tell you that Jal Jeevan Mission, this envisages supply of basically 55 liters of water per person per day to every rural household throughout the country and that that too through functional household tap connection that is FHTC and this is the mission of uh, uh, central mission which is which has to be covered by 2024 which has to be completed by 2024 and in many states already these implementation uh, have been started already further when I talk about water you must know that these water must be uh, drinking and adequate water okay now moving on uh, so we shall start with the first news that is NCRT and Rotary Club of India has uh, decided to telecast e-learning content for class 1 to 12th on all NCRT TV channels, right? So this is of course to ensure that e-learning reaches each and every children across the country with NCRT approved content obviously for obvious reasons and this will be done under the Vidya Dan 2.0 which is one of the missions of uh, central government. Uh, Rotary International will provide, of course, the e-content in Hindi language, of course, and later on, uh, other languages will be added also. And that to NCRT for class 1 to class 12 for each and every subject, which is which comes uh, uh, for these classes. Further, they will also provide the teacher training, which will also include the professional training and professional learnings as well. Further, the Ministry of uh, 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 HRD have been working on integration of technology in education through various schemes and we have already discussed earlier uh, in the earlier sessions previous month. Uh, there are various initiatives for e-learning like operational digital board and uh, Diksha which is uh, the national portal for Indian government then e Shala, then Swayam app then Swayam Prabha the TV channel. So all these things we have already discussed you can visit uh, the current affairs for May for a detailed report on these topics. Further the ministry also uh, said the minister the union minister also said that through e-learning we want to fulfill prime minister's vision of one nation one digital uh, platform. So remember these keywords that is one nation and one digital platform this is the vision of uh, the prime minister right. Now moving on to our next news which is uh, regarding saffron and hing so uh, there have been efforts to enhance the cultivation of hing and saffron now we all know how important hing and uh, saffron uh, saffron are as far as indian cuisine are concerned uh, and they are very valuable part of uh, indian cuisine so as per the facts and data in india the annual demand for saffron spice is 100 tons per year but its average production is only six to seven tons per year which is of course comes from the kashmir valley and hence a large amount of saffron is obviously imported from various other countries and same for hing also there is no production at all there might be myths and misconceptions regarding the fact that hing is actually originated in india and it is product uh, you know produced in india and manufactured in india but it's wrong there is absolutely no production of hing in india and currently about 12 uh, 1200 tons of raw hing worth rupees 600 crore see these pictures that i'm showing you these uh, stones are raw hing and they are then further crushed and then sold in uh, small boxes in form of powders so these raw hing uh, worth of rupees 600 crore is being imported currently from various countries and majorly from Afghanistan, Iran and Uzbekistan which are the primary producers and exporter of hing right. Further just to uh, reduce these import bills in uh, in both saffron for both saffron and uh, you know hing which is which are very uh, you can say valuable uh, spices as far as Indian cuisine is concerned like I said. So for that uh, to increase their production of these two spices Institute of Himalayan Bio Research Technology which is situated in Palampur, Himachal Pradesh uh, and also uh, along with Department of Agriculture of course which comes under government of Himachal Pradesh have forged strategic and implementation partnership. 
This will provide immense benefits by way of, of course, increased farm income for the farmers who will be, uh, you know, involved in cultivation and production, further livelihood of uh, the promotion of their livelihood and the standard of living, and also the rural development of those regions. Also, apart from this, uh, the introduction of these crops will definitely reduce the import. So, this will uh, reduce also the burden of import from uh, the government. And uh, this institute will also provide technical know-how to all the farmers. Basically, uh, they will be trained to do the cultivation of these crops and to state agriculture department officers as well uh, along with the farmers. And they will be set up common seed production centers of saffron and heing respectively in the uh, concerned states and majorly in the northern parts that is Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Further, a tissue culture lab will also be established for large scale production, which is actually basically the aim of government uh, in, order, in order to you know, increase the overall production for the entire country. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, a tissue culture lab will be established for large scale production of quality planting material of these crops. Right. So this was the news from this. Now moving on to our next news. So very good news is coming from the financial sector that India's forex reserve is at all time high at 493.48 billion dollars, and that too amid COVID-19 economic crisis, which is uh, actually going on through all across the globe. Right. And each and every country is facing the economic crisis uh, uh, along with India also. So basically, what these forex reserves are. So in very short, I'll tell you that these forex reserves include the gold reserves for the country, uh, SGRs, which are special drawing rights of the uh, International Monetary Fund, and also some foreign uh, currency assets. Now, what are these foreign currency assets for every country? So, this is for every country, and this asset includes some capital inflows to the capital markets or the fo foreign direct investment, that is FDIs, and external commercial borrowings. So, all these uh, combine up to uh, make the foreign currency asset of any country, which is very important as far as uh, the economic balance is concerned on a global sector. Further, the, uh, these forex reserve, especially for India, is maintained and regulated and uh, the custodian and the manager of uh, these forex reserves is the RBI, Reserve Bank of India. And they operate the overall policy framework, which is, of course, agreed upon with the government in consultation with the central government. Right. Further, uh, the most important part is to know why uh, there has been a significant rise in, uh, you know, uh, the forex reserve for India. So there have been significant rise uh, and growth rate was constant from last uh, five to six years ever since 2014 or 15, uh, I guess. And after that, there have been a significant rise. But during uh, the uh, COVID-19 crisis, when it was expected to decline, when the forex reserves were expected to decline, they uh, uh, actually uh, increase and what was the main reason so the main reason was that there was a rise in foreign portfolio investors and FDIs of course uh, 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 you know uh, we all know the fact that how the businesses and the companies are uh, coming out and they are pulling out their manufacturing units from China so all those uh, collectively have affected and impacted the foreign portfolio investors in India and FDIs further also falling global crude oil prices uh, prices so this has led to a lesser import bill right so india will have to pay less they'll have to spend less and uh, that is how some amount has been uh, saved in that particular sector and thus accounting to uh, increase in forex reserves and of course decline in foreign travels so uh, since decline in foreign travels has been implemented and there has no uh, there has not been any kind of foreign travels by the indians so there is also decline in dollar outflows which means that a lesser amount of rupees is now converted into dollars and spent in foreign nationals right so that uh, that is also one of the reasons Further, significance, what is the significance of these rising forex reserves for India? So, uh, comfort to the government and RBI to manage internal economic issues. This, of course, will give a comfort for both the government of India and the RBI to manage internal economic issues and economic crisis. They will have uh, sufficient and uh, uh, enough amount of fund for that. It, and this amount of entire forex reserves as of now, that is dollar four ninety three uh, or approximately dollar four ninety billions. This will be enough to cover the entire import bill of India for totally one year. This is a very good sign, right? So this is how this uh, amount of rising or this amount of forex reserve at present for India will help. Now further moving on. Uh, 
sovereign rating uh, down uh, downgrade for six uh, uh, premier uh, psus of india has uh, led to a significant worry sign of worry so basically six fallen angels now what are these six fallen angels according to the uh, moody investors service so these companies uh, which are non financial sector companies or which are from non financial sector and whose ratings have dipped or declined to just one notch away from being considered junk so they are just one step away from being considered junk right so those companies are called six fallen angels those companies have been named as six fallen angels and those six companies are ioc that is a uh, uh indian oil corporation then hpcl hindustan petroleum then oil india limited petronet lng uh, bharat petroleum and then ongc oil and natural gas uh, right so these companies have been rated as six foreign angels uh, by the moody's investors service now moving on so we shall end our session with the current covid-19 situation in india so as of now today the total number of samples that have been uh, tested for covid-19 is uh, has crossed the 50 lakh mark and the sample tested in last one uh, one day only 24 hours only is uh, 1.45 lakhs which is a very good sign increased number of signs uh, considering the fact that uh, at the start of first case of covid-19 india had zero number of uh, uh, zero number of uh, testing kits production of testing kits and uh, production of you know uh, the uh, test laboratories and all right so this is a very good growth for india further the current covid-19 status is a uh, total number of active cases has reached 133000 mark although the number of cured and discharged patients has also crossed and it has overtaken the number of active cases which is 135000 which is a very good sign unfortunately the number of death is 7745 at this moment as of 10th of june 8 am now moving on to uh, the next segment that is quiz time so we shall start with the first question which is which of the following does not export heme to india so uh, we export uh, basically we import uh, heme from iran uzbekistan and afghanistan as well but do not uh, import from malaysia malaysia uh, we majorly import palm oil further which of the following does not export uh, so, so sorry the correct answer is uh, option d further who acts as the custodian and manager for the forex reserves of india see you might be uh, see one option can be neglected directly world bank it does not support it will not, uh, not uh, you can say uh, manage the india's forex reserve further you might get confused between the ministry of finance and corporate of cor corporate affairs or the ministry of foreign affairs but the correct answer is rbi so rbi is the policy maker for all the frameworks so correct answer is option a the next one and the last question for today is what among the following is not the reason for current surge in the forex reserves of india so let's see the options one by one rise in foreign uh, foreign portfolio investors and fdis yes correct answer foreign global uh, crude oil prices yes this is also the correct reason decline in foreign travels which led to decline in dollar outflows which is also correct so the uh, wrong one is b of course covid special economic package which has nothing uh, nothing to do with uh, you can say uh, uh, the Uh, rise in forex reserves now so the correct answer would be option d the question for the day for you guys is what is vidya dan 2.0 we have discussed this in today's article write your correct answer in the comment section the answer to this will be told in the next session till then thank you be safe